This is a crowd podcast. Yeah, I'm going to get them done for the shine. That was your key shot. Fuck off and actually like, get on with your job. Yeah. Welcome to Go Love Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast where we're all nice to each other. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're in person today and uh, we're feeling chatty. We're very, yeah, we're, we're feeling, feeling very chatty. chatty. Lauren is the most annoying <laughs> like, that she's ever been. <laughs> Lauren's been saying, y'all. Oh, Right, honestly, I've been so. Have you noticed it before? And you're just like, you fucking. I actually what? haven't. I'm just very oh, irritable no! today. No, I haven't noticed it. As in, oh, like, goodness. I'm just very irritable today. Oh shit! I must. I think I'm like ovulating. <laughs> Um, I always get like really hormonal and hangry and I'm just a bit overwhelmed. Babe. She's a bit well. What, so what we're, we're both quite whelmed at the minute. There's a lot going on in our outside podcast yes. lives. Yes, yeah. many things. Like yeah. 400,000 things <laughs> for, for both of us. Usually we like to like coordinate mm. one person's mm. whelmed, the other one's fine. Yeah. But we, it's nice that we're sharing our whelms currently. That is, well, to be fair. Is I mean, it I, nice I, or is it I have just called you annoying, but before we started <laughs> recording, she did say didn't you that you are feeling less whelmed and that yeah. you'll give all of your positive vibes I can give you my vibes today which is nice which is nice this is how friendships work but it just means at the minute mostly we're both quite whelmed yeah so we've well, got like it. lots lots of work stuff on haven't you work is terrible uh many things other than <laughs> and other things but it's fine and you're busy and but we're turning our whelms into chatty we are blah blah blah, blah. and she called me annoying because I say y'all it is, you, She's it's really annoying. upset about it. You can't say y'all. You're not American. It's just <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's just weird. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, but you took my muffin off me, didn't you? Like <laughs> I had literally a thumb of muffin. It, just the, that more. muffin was as big as your head. It is as big as my left breast. It's yeah, a Costco muffin. And it was John was I John gasped almost. when she got it out. <laughs> I was like, the, the muffin, everyone. Lauren, <laughs> the size of your muffin. <laughs> No one said that to me for ages. <laughs> it's been a terrible 2023. I'm real. Oh, <laughs> no, you need to get back out there. I do. Oh, oh, no, oh. <laughs> don't put that in the room. Right, you need to get back we're out there. We're on YouTube, y'all. And she just <laughs> don't say y'all blowjobs. <laughs> she just demonstrated blowjobs on the mic, y'all. Sorry, mum. <laughs> Stop it. I will literally leave this she's, room. She I am is highly gonna, irritable. She is. This is hilarious. Look, I won't do that then. That's why. <laughs> Should we get on with it? Should, Should we, we crack on? on? <laughs> this is nice. It's nice to be in person. It's nice that we can actually be honest as well, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than just, you know, like, we've spoken about this before, but you know, like, I'm hi, really... Hun. Hi, Han. How's yeah, you? We're not, hi, um, we're not. I don't know. No, do she's definitely not feeling hi, Han, today. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's feeling sassy. Do you know what it is as well? It's because she's rocked up, and this is the first time I've ever seen Laura wear something like this. She's wearing a band t shirt. She looks yeah. cool as hell. I am cool as hell. You look really. <laughs> Did you not know? Did you not get the memo? And she's wearing the short Uggs that all the cool kids wear. Oh, yeah, mate. You look cool as hell today. Chilly you look great. AF today. Yeah, mate, you look great. Oh, yeah. And Gen I look, look like proud. I'm going to fucking work. Yeah, you do. I do. But I do. You do look pretty. I look pretty, but I look, I'm going to work. Mm. And as I said earlier, it's a good job I've got a pretty face because <laughs> I can't dress myself. <laughs> I'm going to you work. kind of do it like a child, like a. <laughs> That's not what I said. Wow, the compliments <laughs> are flying. Today. You know, like a child with a nice dress, tights, and shiny shoes. <laughs> I kind of like a child going to a funeral. Don't you? Why stop? I can't deal with the compliments. There's too many. <laughs> You look like a child. Go- look, I look, look, I look like I've got a little flowery dress on and my black tights and my shiny shoes. <laughs> I'm going to a funeral. <laughs> oh, God. Cool. Okay. So you look like you're going to a gig. Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. I said gig, yeah. not concert. Gig. And I look like a child going to a funeral. <laughs> and on, on that, that note... note- <laughs> So we've been doing a bunch more serious stuff this series. We've done BMI, we've done anxiety, we've done binge eating. So we just wanted to have a bit of a chilled one today and a bit of a catch up. And we asked our listeners to ask us some questions. We're going to run through some. I think there's some pretty funny ones in there. Okay, let's get to the questions, shall we? Because you're boring me. Um, <laughs> told you, she's freaking sassy today, people. One, one today. This is from uh, one of our listeners called Laura. Hi, Laura. Uh, she says, Lauren, would you rather never see another musical again or... <gasps> 
never talk slash read about history again. That is so cruel. Lauren's face right now. She's gone pale, everyone. Pa- sorry, paler. <laughs> She's insipid. She looks like Casper with hair. A little like a Victorian child going to a funeral. Yeah, no, I know about it. <laughs> I'm so... I'm pardon? Pardon? Mm. I can never go to see a musical yeah. or never talk about history. Is there a third option? No. Nope. I don't understand. Um, oh, uh, mm, um, n- no, thank you. <laughs> No, I, I deny. I, I deny the question. I don't consent to the question. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake! Okay, I would probably ah uh, never talk about history what again. What was that noise? I know I've got a Richard the Third book in my bag. Oh, <laughs> of course you have. Also, do you want to hear a funny story? Not really. Um, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, it's <laughs> Uh, recently me and Stace my friend Stace were chatting and uh, she I can't remember what the context of the conversation was but she went something like well, what about Richard and I was like the third she went your ex-boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh yes I had a significant relationship with someone called Richard once and I immediately went to the third so anyway <laughs> maybe it's musicals I've got to give up musicals then yeah, yeah. I, that's what I thought you were going to say Okay, I didn't like that. Right, okay, I'm going to give you an equally horrible question. Are <laughs> you ready, then. young lady? I'm ready. Okay, would you rather never be allowed to eat mini eggs again mm. or have to be the most Christmassy person ever? Oh, both turn my stomach. <laughs> the second one more so. The thing is, the thing is, everyone, they are not the only chocolate and I hate Christmas. And it, like, if they said, like, have, have a really good Christmassy day, I yeah. probably could you'd tolerate that. Yeah. But that, I'm assuming that means all that's year like round. A Christ- that's like a your November. Nah, I couldn't do it. Okay. So I'd rather forgo mini eggs. That's how much I hate Christmas. I think you need to go away at Christmas. I do as well. I think you should actually go away this year. Fuck this year and just go away. Yeah, we said we might. I think you totally should. Okay. I'll have buddy. That's sorted then. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay. Next question from our lovely listener called Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. If you could be in a musical, <gasps> which... <laughs> Calm down. Which one would it be and why? Or would Ooh. you make it a new one? That's a great <gasps> question, Charlie. Charlie, that's a fantastic question. I actually have the most perfect answer for this. Go. To the point where I actually spoke about it yesterday at work. No. And everyone was like, Lauren, you need to write this musical. And I was like, I know, but I am not gifted in any of these ways. This might be a jukebox musical that you would go to. Go on. I want a Mamma Mia style musical. Hold on. Hold, hold your horsies. Mm-hmm. Mamma Mia style musical. The brand new story to the music of Mr. George Michael. It's all right. We can't do this <laughs> podcast anymore, Laura. Like, what the hell? I thought you were saying like Celine right. Dion, like Whitney, Mariah, like Obvious, Adele, obvious, like, obvious. George Michael songs, are you serious? A bit of like Club There's Tropicana. There's a film, you know, they kind of beat you to it. It's called Last Christmas. I actually quite like it. It's got Amelia Clark in it. Who I it's love. a good time. So no, I like him a lot. What would you be in? Mm, Heather's is probably one of my favourite musicals. I thought like that'd be really fun to be in. Would you be Veronica? Oh yeah, that would be a great yeah, role, wouldn't it? Be a great time. Yeah, or the like main bitch you person that Jodie Steele Heather plays. Chandler. Yep. Heather, Heather Chandler. Heather Chandler. Yeah, Red. Yes. Yeah, Candy Store's a great song. That would be fun. Listen up, bitch. Yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's you? a good one. Um, I thought you'd rock Legally Blonde. That is the nicest thing you've said to me all day, and I totally agree. <laughs> I love we'll Legally Blonde. Uh, oh my! Oh yeah! Oh my god! Oh my god! You guys, oh. you don't have to sing. You don't know you that. You don't know that. Um, I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Legally Blonde. I would obviously be in Six. Oh, and I would be yes. Catherine of Aragon in Six. Um, but equally, oh, I don't. I can't choose because I love them all. Okay, should we move on? Yeah. Okay. okay. I've got a question for you then. In that case, sorry, I'm getting very excited about things. <laughs> um, one of our lovely listeners, Lara. Hi, Lara. Said. Laura, we know you love Handmaid's Tale, mm-hmm. but what show or movie would you both like to live in? Please oh. don't live in Handmaid's Tale. No, God, no. Although, no! I mean, no, no. It would be cool to like fight the good fight, you know? Oh, yeah, up the pa- up, down the pa- patriarchy. Up the patriarchy. Up, 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 the, up the matriarchy. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Difficile, huh? Very, very hard. I mean... I wanna Mo- oh, Moana. Easy. You'd live in Moana. I'd live in Moana. That sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. What's the land? What's the island called? Maui. Is the is is, is, no, is no, that's, that's the, the rock? Character name, isn't it? Yeah. You live on Moana Island, though. With all the fishies, magic powers. Oh yeah. Coconuts for boobs. Happy days. <laughs> coconuts for boobs. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds great. You'd live on Moana Island. You? I'd love that for you. Um. 
I would live in oh my creek. No, because I think they'd all wind me up. Do you know oh. what I mean? I love Shit's Creek. Currently rewatching it. Yeah. It, make, it is joy. But I think if I had to live with Moira, if I had to live with Alexis, <laughs> I'd be like, shut the f- I know I'm annoying. I was just <laughs> literally in my head thinking, more annoying than you? <laughs> I think we could all categorically say Alexis and Moira Rose are more annoying. <laughs> no, I do agree. And you know I'm only like, no, I, know, I, I know, love I know, you. I, know. You know um, I would probably go to something like, I'm going new girl because I want to fall in love with Nick Miller. Okay. And I'm Jessica Day. And I want to be best friends with Winston yeah. and Kat Ferguson. Yeah. Anyone else not know anyone and Schmidt. that Lauren's talking about? Be Just best me. friends with CC. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next question uh, from Erin. This is this. Wow. Erin, did you? Oh, she's sassy. Wow. She says, would you rather fight 10 chicken sized dinosaurs or one dinosaur sized chicken. chicken. Yeah, I understand. I have been asked this question before. Have you? Yeah, absolutely. Have you? Yeah, it's one of those like, would you rather questions. It's like the standard it? would you rather questions. Yeah. Oh. I'm going for 10 mm-hmm. because I can kick them. Whereas a di- <laughs> Do you know how big dinosaurs are? Have you been to the Natural History Museum? Obviously not. <laughs> No, ever in your life, I mean, anything worse, you would hate it. It's so boring. Mm, no, yeah, sorry. I would agree. With, ironically, I love history. I don't actually like museums. Um, they are really dull. Unless like, nice. someone's there, like explaining everything to you. Space museum does that sometimes. Science okay. museum is very cool. Beats. Anyway, I'm going ten little dinosaurs. You same. Ten I even hate the aquarium. Side note. Oh, me, the aquarium's boring. Me, oh, thank God you said that. Me and Matt went, and I was like, oh, look a fish. Fish. Oh, yeah, woo. One. I don't. I also don't like a zoo. I don't. I hate Agreed. zoos. Agreed. We agree on something. Oh my god, zoos are so overrated. Like, do you want to just go and see a bunch of trapped animals in captivity <laughs> and pay for the privilege of their suffering? No thanks. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm all right. I like an interactive experience. I did once feed some penguins. Uh, that was really fun. But as 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 a rule, zoos I'm not a fan of. No, I know. I think in like years to come they'll be abolished. I reckon. I think so because even if you think like Sea World, oh How? yeah, it's gone. Ugh. Yeah, it makes absolutely. Feel Ill. Uh, right, question for you, Laura, from mm-hmm. Cherry. Mm-hmm. This is such a lovely question. And also, <laughs> when you ask this back to me, then I'm going to have a small <laughs> panic attack. Um, are you I doing the coming. job you wanted to do as a kid? Yeah, to be honest with you, yeah, I am. Oh, Which is really lovely, so actually. Nice. It makes me feel really happy. I mean, I wanted to be a midwife or... Did you? Yeah, like massively. When I was, so when I was 15, I was desperate to be a midwife. But I also was like, yeah, but I also want to do like something in like plus size fashion and like not like influencing or anything because I never wanted to be that. I don't even want to be that now. But <laughs> And it wasn't a thing then. No, it wasn't. Mm. But um, yeah, like I, I really think I'm, I'm so lucky. I love what I do. Like genuinely love it. That makes me so happy. I could cry. Mm. You're doing what you want to do when you grow up. Yeah, it's nice. I, yeah, so nice. I feel very lucky. I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank I you. Am. Oh, she's and doing you? good things. <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you want to no. do? So when I was younger, not I wanted this. not, not, <laughs> not that. Not when I say not this, everyone. I don't mean this podcast. Obviously, I freaking love this podcast. This is this is what gets me through the days. Uh, when I was little, I wanted to own a sweetie shop. The idea being that I could come down in the middle I of the night you. and eat my own <laughs> products. <laughs> right? You really thought that through. I did. I was yeah, smart kid. Uh, but no, I think my dream would really be something like running a pub or a bar, so I can meet everyone and talk to people and like be part, like my nan and granddad yeah. at the pub when I was younger and stuff like that. So I just want to do that. But I can see you doing that. I can see me doing that. That is also one of my dreams to do that. Is it? Should we do that together? Is it really? Genuinely, I would love to. Have we ever talked about this? No. Are you fucking serious? No, right no now? I didn't know that. You, that's what you were doing. Like, like genuinely, if I could, if I didn't have the mortgage mm, now, yeah. genuinely, if I didn't have the mortgage, I would do it. This might be. Watch this space. Imagine a go love yourself pub, everyone. Oh. B&B. So what I really want is like a place where you could come and like you'd have the pubs, but also might be do like a brunch on the weekend so you can get like nice. girly vibes. And yeah, but then yeah, on yeah. Sundays you'd go there for like for a roast with with your nan or like coffee with your nan or like a roast or right. just want it to be everything for everyone. But like I'd be the landlady. Stop it! You want to do that too? Should we do that? We need to have this conversation. We need to, yeah, everyone, sorry, but shit. But, uh, this, but if there's any thought. rich listeners out there, <laughs> what are they Watch called? This face. Fun funding investors. Investors. Thank you very much. We can tell about the public sector, can't you? Jesus. Um, <laughs> oh. Um, Lauren Andrea wants to know what's your favourite thing that you've ever sewn. So when I first started sewing, like 
uh, I did a course like 10 years ago. I made like these sort of 50s housewife frilly aprons. Oh. And I made one for my mum. Uh, sorry, I made one for my nan and I made one for my stepmom. And my nan still has it. Oh. And it was like blue, white polka dot with like white frills on it. And I think that's probably my favourite thing so that's far. That's cute. What about the dress that um I... Oh, no, wait. <laughs> oh, no, wait, Nora. Because uh, do you want me to make you yeah. a dupe of like a £5,000 dress? Yeah, I do. There is a account. They don't do it in size fat. <laughs> there is an account on Instagram, and it's like, can you just sew this for me? And it's basically a bunch of people <laughs> sharing stories of like when people know that they sew, being like, oh, can you just do this for me? And do you know what? Every time I will mention uh, that, like, you sew, people are like, oh my god, my friend's getting married. Can you make her wedding dress? Are you having me on? Now you know what it feels like to be a baker. Is that what it's can like? Can you just knock up? No, I can't, Sheila, because it costs £25 ingredients and four hours. So now I can't just knock something up. You could, though. If anyone could, you could. But, yeah, no, uh, Sheila and Kevin, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it's like. Yeah, if I get that honest, now. Honestly, that's kind of one of the reasons why I stopped doing it. Is it? it? Yeah, because every birthday and every family gathering oh, and course. every time you meet out friends, they'd be like, they genuinely, they go, where's the cake? And I, I got too much and I was like, I can't do it. I can't cope. That is very good point. It's very expensive. Yeah. Um, and it's time consuming. Next question is from Cara and she said, do you have any tattoos? And if not, would you ever consider getting any? No, and probably not. Oh. I I think some people look really cool with them. Like Lottie, for example. She got She's tattoos? got some amazing tattoos. Um, yeah, I've been very privileged to see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't feel like they would suit me and I know also know that I am the kind of person that like ugh, I regret it I think okay. the only thing that I would want to get is like a treble clef but like what's the point like I know I love music I don't need to get it I would get that too. Me. How fucking hello. I would absolutely. Are we awesome? yeah, I love them when, when we're we at the Can we be friends again? Can we be now, friends? <laughs> Can we be best friends? <laughs> Do we just become best friends? I would get so, a music note as well, but then I think that like insinuates that you can play an instrument, of which <laughs> oh, really? I cannot. <laughs> so, like if I've got a treble clef or like, yeah, a music note somewhere. Yeah. I also don't have any. I'm also not pierced anywhere either. If that was the truth. <laughs> Why did I just immediately think of your funny? Because, like, Laura, why? you're obsessed with it. Stop it now. <laughs> it's because like, I'm not pierced anywhere. I was like, oh, right. Well, okay. obviously I meant ears. Like, I had my ears right, pierced. One day we are piercing. taking Lauren to Claire's accessory. She, honestly, she I has am. threatened this before. And I was like, I cannot going. tell you how emphatically I don't. I'm not You're bothered. having it. It's tough. But I, but it's I'm, weird that Listen you to me, pierced. Laura. No means no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> tough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not bothered. No piercings, no tattoos, but I would love to get one. But I'm also with you. I can never make up my mind. Why don't you get a treble clef and then underneath it it says, P.S. No, I can't play an P.S. instrument. P.S. No, I can't play an instrument. Stop asking me to. Stop telling me to bring a recorder everywhere, for God's sake. Lauren, Poppy wants to know, are you planning on getting any pets? And are you a dog or a cat person? So I'm a dog person because they're the best things in the world. Agreed. But I don't see me getting one all the time I live solo. Yeah, totally fair. Right. And in a flat as well. And in a flat, it's not fair. I'd love the idea of it. I love like how Buddy gets you out of the house. I mm. need that because if I don't need to go out, I don't go out. I could yeah, not I leave like my that. house for like four days. Yeah. Um. So I'd love it for that. I'd love it to have like a little like beating heart in the flat, but also I can't deal with the commitment. I love being able to just go out for the day, not worry about it, live my best life. Also not deal with dog poop. Fair. Absolutely yeah. fair. You, I'm assuming you're a dog person. Yeah, I, um, yeah. You know, she hates cats, everyone. No, you, don't, you can't say No, we don't. Go can't out no. me publicly. No, I know. You don't hate and cats. Then I'm not particularly... F- Listen, right. My dad hates them. My mum's allergic. I was. Ne- it was never in the... It was never going to happen. Never in the cards. Never in the cards. Never in the cards. I grew up with dogs. Um, my friends that have cats love them and, yeah. I do too. I'm happy for them. I never wish any harm to them or anything. I wouldn't want to put they them are, in zoo. They are cute. <laughs> Or in, the, me? or in the aquarium. <laughs> or in the aquarium. I just they're just not for me, all right? No, I am with you as well. I wouldn't want a cat. I would get a dog out of anything. Yeah. And have a great time. Would you get any more? Absolutely dogs? not. Never. No, do you Did know you what? Ever want a dog? No. Okay. It was Matt. It's gone well, isn't it? It's gone so well. <laughs> like one month now of him not eating, a thousand pound vet's bills. Oh, it's great. Get a, a get thousand a thousand pound vet. We're over a thousand pounds in vet's bills, yeah. Buddy is a pampered pooch, huh? <laughs> Well, not really. He just we just need he was to unpo- he was poorly. He was poorly. No, I know, but you know, he is pampered. But the thing is, right? He's the love of my life and the bane of my life. Having a dog is a huge commitment, and mm. I do. There are days where I'm like, I regret having him. I wouldn't ever like no, give him up or change anything. 
But you know that days when you're not feeling well or it's pissing down with rain, you don't want to walk them. Mm. You feel better once you you have done it. Or when he's just been annoying barking at birds for an hour. That That's fun. There are what days where it is really insane. trying. And also, do you feel like my whole day slash life runs around him? Mm. It might just be because he's a puppy and because I've pampered him too much. But um, I feel like people don't really talk about it enough. Puppy bleeds are a real thing and they are a big commitment. And sometimes mm. you feel a bit like resentful because they they do kind of take up your life. Like, I can't just kind of like piss off now and go and see friends. Or I can't just come up to London like today without mm. putting him in doggy daycare, which cost me 40 quid. Like, it's a commitment. That is a lot. Not as much I, as nursery, I don't think but... a lot of people realise because it's the kind of romantic bit of like, oh, we're going to get a dog. It's going to be so nice. I don't think a lot of people realise how much work it is until you have one. Yeah. So even that, I'm listening to you being like, oh, it's so much work. But I'm like, oh, I reckon I could do it. I know full well, though, in real life, I probably can do it. It is amazing. Like the love you get back and the like, the loyalty is brilliant. You would love mm. it. I just wouldn't want to do it solo. No, I agree with you. Oh, it's definitely not a puppy anyway. I think Absolutely with a puppy that you need someone else to, to kind of take over and like help with you. And I, I just would not recommend a puppy solo personally. No, and I can't deal with the commitment. That's a lot of commitment for things. Commitment and phobe. A commitment phobe over here. Absolutely <laughs> not. If you did get a dog though or a puppy, what breed would you get? Oh my god, I love them all. Like. I love an Alsatian. I love a Retriever. I love like the English Bulldogs. I love, I love them all. I would like every single one of them. I see you a Dalmatian. Love... I love a Dalmatian. <gasps> I Were you about to say that? No, no. I could just so see you with a Dalmatian with a pink collar, like a pink glittery collar or something. Pedita. Yeah, I can see it too. Love that for me. <laughs> <gasps> Fancy pants. I want them all, but I will wait until I'm a proper grown up. Okay, with a country estate. <laughs> <laughs> need to marry very La- rich Lady very Lauren. soon yeah oh, Lady Lauren <laughs> Lady Lauren of Windsor that sounds quite I nice. see that for me I see that for you when Harry and Meghan get divorced well I did meet him just before he met yeah, Meghan know. and it was sad times everyone we fell we in know. love and then I did the bend and snap in front of him yeah there. No, I mean, I'm sure he remember. He's probably in his second memoir coming out. It, it probably is. After he's <laughs> talked about his penis enough, he's gone. And then on to this time I met this girl in an ambulance station. Yes, go <laughs> I'm laughing because I've skipped ahead and read the next question. Do you want to know what it is? Oh, God. It's because I had a flashback memory. I can't wait for you to ask me this. Oh, but... do, what, shall I ask you this one? No, I'll ask you first. Okay, what's the loudest fart you've ever done in public? <gasps> Only I wants to know. So, fun fact about me, I'm like 24-7 hilarious and great and fun times where I actually hate talking about farts and poo. I why? hate it. I, I don't know why. It's really natural. No, I know. And I hate it. I don't have an answer for that question. I've never done a fart in my life. You carry on, Laura. <laughs> okay, I can't remember the loudest one. <laughs> I can't remember the smelly. <gasps> oh god right okay i'm putting all the way in my uncomfortableness guys we're talking about smelly farts now okay i'm in the zone okay so i'm um, in my first job in publishing company right it's pretty much like a male dominated industry and there's this one guy one of the editors i'm like a real i'm a genius right <clears throat> and he's like a head honcho editor absolute prick this guy <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I love where i hope this is going and we're like standing there and you know when like your stump your stomach starts cramping oh, i remember okay, farting yeah. right and you know when you're so embarrassed that i was like oh <laughs> I remember going, oh my God, what's that smell? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> smell it, dealt it. He gagged. <gasps> and he went. <laughs> what? <laughs> he looked at me and he went, that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he went. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friend, is art. <laughs> and he walked I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel. I don't. I feel so offended. <laughs> I don't know. That, my friend is art. So was it just the two of you? So we knew it was you? <laughs> we were in an open plan off. <laughs> She's literally crying, everyone. She's actually legit crying. We were in an open plan office, but like kind of on our own. So I was trying to like make out. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop it. That, my friend is out and just walked off. He gagged. Honestly, I was just mortified. I'm so pleased that you've told uh, very See, now I was laughing before I drew that one out. 
Oh dear. Oh good ass. Oh no, that's fucking hilarious. Oh, that's like my new favourite story about you, I think. <laughs> Oh, God, how do we move on from that? How there? do we move on from that? Um, I do have another question from Sarah. I don't yes. know if it will live up to it, but come on, Sarah. We, I believe in you. She has asked, Laura, are there any fun things you'd love to do, but your brain has stopped you from doing it so far? That's a good question. Very good question. Um, no, I think I'm pretty good now at kind of like, yeah, doing things I want to do. I think my body sometimes stops me from doing things I want to do. Like in Tenerife, there was that water park. And yeah, there's like a weight oh, limit. Yeah. Um, no, I think generally, like I, I kind of yeah do if I if I something, if something I want to do and I can physically do it, I will do it. Oh my god, I'm so in admiration of you. That's amazing. You? No, there's a bunch I want to do. Like what? I think I'm doing life wrong. Like what? I would have. Oh, it's two things. I guess it's like is it regrets of things that I haven't done versus like things I wouldn't do now. So like I would have loved to have moved to New York for like a few years and lived that life. Mm. I would have loved to have, I don't know, all those. There's a bunch of other stuff, but maybe now, yeah, maybe there's something now. If I wanted to do it, I would. There's nothing really stopping me. Sometimes it's my own motivation. It's money. It's other bits like that. But maybe, I don't know. Yeah, actually, now I think about it, if there's something I want to do. Yeah. So, like, I wanted to sew. I'm sewing. I wanted to go back to choir. I'm doing that. Yeah. And there are other things that I'm doing I would that say I'm that you're really too. good at doing yeah. things that you want to do, not letting things hold you back. I don't do anything. Well, put it this way. I don't really do anything I don't want to do other than work mm. and clean. Because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part yeah. of adulting, unfortunately. Yeah, that's part of life, and I don't understand who wrote these rules. But yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. I hope that encourages any anyone listening. Yeah, do the, something you don't do the things. Do, do all the things. Do the things. Sarah wants to know what's one piece of advice you'd give your younger self. Flippity doo dah day. I've got. Oh. I'm going to have a think about that answer and I'm going to flip it right back to you, Laura Addington. Nice. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So like a true politician, uh, what Yeah, what advice would you give your younger self? It's a, maybe a bit cheesy, but I would like love to give younger Laura a, a, just a big hug and say like, it'll all be all right. I want to do that Like too, it will know. be all right. Like it's not going to be perfect. It mm. won't be easy and stuff. Um, I'd probably tell her to like not do that fad diet. Mm-hmm. Um and to have a bit more confidence and faith in herself because, like, it will come good and you will be loved. Bloody hell, Laura, that's lovely. That was very deep. That was deep. <laughs> For a light-hearted chat. It was, it was deep. And I want to do that too, you know. Yeah. I want to go back and, like, just, like, be your best friend and tell you that don't listen to these f- horrible people or people in your life that are saying these horrible things. That's what I'd like to do. But I'm glad that I found you when I did. Aww. Oh, babes! Stop <laughs> it! So cute! Stop. So cute! So cute! Have you thought of anything yet? <clears throat> um, I think I would just. I think I'd want to tell myself just to make the most of everything, mm. which sounds really general. But again, I'm a really lazy person and I lack a lot of motivation for a thousand different reasons, right? <laughs> love the honesty. Oh, and I do, <laughs> but I do, and so I would just love to tell myself just. Just stop it and make the most of everything. And I've had, I've, I've had such a fabulous time, but I know that I could have had maybe loads more fabulous times if I just said yes to more and just made more of stuff. Mm. So I'm going to take that advice that I can't give my younger self and I'll try to do that from now. Love that. I love that too. Love that for you. Let's do it. Let's all do that. I okay. enjoy that a lot. Right, okay. I've got, no, I've got a question from Olivia. I really love this question. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. What is the best thing about being fat? She said, for me, it's annoying loser men. <laughs> <laughs> I love that too, Olivia. Yeah, do you know what? That's a really good point. Mm. Um, we don't often think about. We don't do like, it. This whole podcast the, is what's shit about being fat, isn't it? But, kind of, yeah, and like yeah. how hard it is and stuff. Um, yeah, I reckon that's probably a good one, isn't it? Because I think you know, there's a lot of misogyny in like uh, around what women should look like and how they should behave. Mm. When you don't conform to the kind of like ideal beauty standard, yeah. it is a bit of a, an up yours to the patriarchy, and I'm sure it does offend a lot of men who think we should be kind of you know at home and mm. slaves to our husbands and like that. And that's fine if obviously if that's your like choice. Also, like yeah, there's nothing wrong with that no. if that's what you want to do. But like as in when it's kind of forced on you, and also it's not so much that it's like not having a voice or yeah mm. looking a certain way behaving in a ladylike manner no, no time thank for you it. no time for it uh so that do you think that's yours then up up yeah, the patriarchy I think so, yeah. down the patriarchy what why do you keep saying up i think the i keep to say thing like like middle finger up to the patriarchy right. let's Good. just say I mean glad you clarified that De- definitely down to the patriarchy <laughs> um what's the best thing about being fat so this is a weird one to say i think it's honestly the capacity of what i can eat <laughs> 
<laughs> because like I can eat a lot more now. I'm a bigger person. Like just by science, it, you know, it takes me more calories to keep my body going, right? And mm-hmm. I, so I can feel those calories if I wanted to with a donut. And it's not really going to have a huge impact anywhere. But mostly it is when I see TikToks from women who are much braver than me calling out the silly, horrible people saying horrible stuff about fat people. And I feel mm. very empowered when that happens. Yeah. And I get it. And I understand it. I love that as well. And also, I think the solidarity when you meet women in other bigger bodies as well. I think that's quite cool. Yeah, the shared experience is yeah. always really nice. That sense of community and belonging. Because yeah. I think a lot of us didn't really have that growing up. So I think so. That's I really hope nice. that's the thing. Because I don't everyone was getting Mini Coopers back in like the early 2010s. And I was just my friends. But there was this rumour of like people would like wave to other people in Mini Coopers. on the Like, you know, our bus drivers wave to each other. I was poor. I had an old Renault Clio. So no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have one either. I had a 10 year old. Uh, Vauxhall Corsa. Oh, Chuck, I miss you so much. Um, <laughs> did you ever meet Chuck? No. <gasps> He's Charles the First. My Chuck, my car, Charles the First. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move on. Um, Please do. <laughs> yeah, I would like to get to a world in which just fat babes just like wave to each other down the street because we understand. <laughs> like, there was a girl on the train this morning and uh, she was in a bigger body and she was looking fine. And I just want to go up to everyone and be like, Girl, you look great. You should. I I do. If I, I do. ever see someone that looks great, I yeah. go out of my way to say that because mm. if you ever think of like if someone's ever said that compliment to you, it can often make your day. I'm going to ask the penultimate question to you, Laura, and it is: What would you say to someone who gets body shamed by their mum? Oh, tough one. First mm. of all, I would say I'm really sorry because that's really hard, like really really hard. Because you know your mum's supposed to like have your back and listen mum relationships are really complex mother daughter relationships mother daughter very relationships. very difficult sometimes agreed um i i think it's it's really challenging i think that there are kind of like steps and processes that you could take um obviously i don't really know like any more detail than that mm. so you know you may have said something to her before but um one thing my mum's never body shamed me by the way but like um i i i did start to talk to my mum about kind of the way she spoke about diets, her body and things like she once said about me losing weight for the wedding and really upset me because it sort of made me feel like I wasn't good enough. So I think vocalising how you feel and like why you feel like that is kind of like your first option. A lot of the time it's just got this generational like passed down stuff. So like I'm not saying like she's been really horrible to you. I'm not kind of saying that that's okay. But it may be because of her own kind of like internalised like fat phobia and her own like sort of upbringing and things that she's kind of soaked in over the years of like thinking what body should look like um I think setting clear boundaries like is really really important and then if she doesn't respect you and she makes you feel like shit then I think that putting even kind of stricter and firmer boundaries in place she doesn't respect when you say don't talk about my body Mm. or can we not talk about that then I think that you have a right to either distance yourself or remove yourself completely it's but it's really hard it's really hard and i think probably most of us have experienced a, you know a, a comment that hopefully will never be meant with malice i understand sometimes they are mm. um but i think what you said was perfect and the only thing i would say is yeah that what you have said before is that you know we grew up in the noughties and 90s they grew up in the 60s 70s for example when it mm. was even worse and there wasn't a lovely thing of you know good people on instagram you know, yeah. champion great the good podcast fight. Called and great yourself. podcast called Love Yourself with two <laughs> fabulous people. Um, but yeah, so sometimes it's education as well. Yeah, but also yeah. boundaries. Boundaries. You answer that perfectly, babes. Oh, thanks, babes. <laughs> right, last question is for you. <clears throat> oh, Vicky, I want to know what are your favourite things about each other. Well, that's a cute one, isn't it? Um, so my favourite thing about you, aside from how unbelievably sassy you get when you're tired, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> oh, there's, I, it's too difficult because I, like, I'm not going to look at you when I say it because I feel like I'm like I feel like I'm going to smoke up your ass. <laughs> I don't mean to. And I mean this very genuinely. I think it's two things. It's one is that you are unbelievably kind, like to a fault sometimes, like to your detriment because you put so many people before yourself. And you're so kind. You always, you know, for example, the best example I've got of this is it was the day of the Bake Off final. It was on telly. Like Laura had gone through a couple of weeks of really shit stuff in the lead up to it. 
and I can't remember what shit time I was going through at the time, but I was. And she turned up at my door. The, the show started at like half seven. You turned up at my door at 10 past seven with a bunch of flowers for me. And I was like, what is happening? Why are you doing this? You're about to be on national TV in front of millions. And she wasn't thinking of herself. She was thinking of me. I really like that. Um, so you are really unbelievably, genuinely kind. And then also the fact that you've turned that opportunity into something that is impacting like thousands of people like you have got hundreds of thousands of people that are following you and I see the messages and I see them to me as well because I'm pretty sure a lot of people who follow me think I'm you because I get called Laura daily I, 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 I get called Laura all the time hi Laura I can't have my phone yeah okay cool um yeah and you're impacting people's life that's like the best thing ever but it's you're good at it you care about it and you're kind I love you Oh, thank no. you. Oh, <laughs> carry on. Um, <laughs> um, I w- yeah, similar actually. To be fair, like your kindness, I think you are like genuinely the the warmest, like most like good person, like with a pure heart and soul, like that I've ever known and will ever know. Thanks. Me and Matt talk about this regularly because he loves you. I'm a bit worried he wants to run off and marry you <laughs> instead because I'm like, all right, yes, yeah, okay, all right, we get okay, it. Okay, now I know. Um. You have like this such this like zest for life, um, which I just love and I think is like so infectious. And I don't think I don't think you know how special you are, which also like makes you even like more special. Like you have such a good pure heart. Um and I also really love the fact that you always fight for the underdog. Like always. I think that's a really special quality because sometimes like we talk a lot about our experiences of like being in a bigger body because that's our experience but sometimes it's not enough like you should champion other people like, and you do you champion like I remember when like Black Lives Matter all mm. the BLM stuff was like really prevalent in the news and then um, you were like championing that like and you meant it it wasn't just like tokenistic mm. um, and I really love that like that passion in you and like you're just such a good egg <laughs> like I just genuinely think you are like a really beautiful person inside and out Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, babes. I'm really emotional now. That was nice. That was nice. I we don't we, do that often, do we? We don't do, we? do that. I mean, yeah, thank you. That honestly means the world. The bit about championing other people, that I can't tell you how much that means to me. I think it's so important that we use our platforms and privilege to do all the best things that we can. Yeah, and you do. And I get to do that in my in my day job as well. I get to do that quite a bit. And I'm, t- you know, probably annoying everyone else by how much I do it, but I don't care. No, you shouldn't care. Absolutely not. But even like in like this kind of like in the Instagram world, like obviously like your followers have really grown and like, and I remember chatting to you about it and I was saying to you like, oh, I'll start doing ads and stuff because you're putting a lot of effort in and there has to be a bit of a payback because there's a lot of abuse that comes with being online and you're like, no, I just want to help people. I don't think I can do it. I just, all, all I want to do is help people. And you said that actually, and it was a time in my life where I was feeling like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do this anymore. Mm. And it really put it back into perspective of me about why I do it. So it I did. can't, yeah, it really did. So uh, I can't thank you enough for that. Oh, but I love that you do that. With, uh, it's what I mean about you have such a pure heart. I do. Like I love it. This has been the best thing ever. Like, obviously, look, it was a conversation we had, what, a, nearly two years ago. Of like, oh, do you fancy doing a podcast? Didn't realise it would become this thing. And it's the best thing ever that we can impact people's lives. And I think that's mm. it's like the best bit of both of us that we do this. Oh! Oh! No, be right really back. We're going to go and have a smooch and then we'll be back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we end with, and this is my only favourite thing ever, some Am I the Arsehole? F- yes. Yes, I absolutely love them. Okay. Do you know what I love the most? Because I my, my uh, instinct is always yes, there are souls. <laughs> if if I know it's about a man, yes, yeah, there are souls. And do then jump I, in really then like I, yeah. You jump in with both feet, don't you? I'm I, like, right, let's take a step back. <laughs> let's assess always the like, situation. Yeah, let's well, take it from there's... both sides. <laughs> you always say that in all of them. I was I think I was talking to one of the girls about it that this bit, and I was like, it's so funny because I will just be like, yes, there are souls. I hate everyone. Okay, I'm gonna read out the first one, and I'm okay. so excited because I think I already know how I well, I know how we're going to feel okay and then I know that I'm not going to change my mind uh, <laughs> am I the asshole for pointing out my wife's baby weight one two three yes, yes. yeah F. I am a 32 year old male and have been married to my wife 31 female for nine years we have a seven year old son together and two year old twins she has showed no attempt to lose the weight and no longer goes to the gym she used to always be in the gym four days a week was that before she had three children 
Uh, the other night, she was complaining her new jeans no longer fit, and I pointed out that she still has her baby weight. She got really upset and said I basically called her unattractive. That is not the case at all. I find my wife beautiful, but she keeps sizing up in her jeans and then acts confused why. We're very open with each other, so I didn't think she'd take it so offensively. I told her I thought she was beautiful and that wasn't supposed to be an insult, just that she hasn't lost it yet. She then got defensive and said she's carried two babies in her body and what did I expect? Yeah. That night she slept as far to the wall as she could get and had an attitude with me for the rest of the night. We are open about things. I never meant for it to be taken negatively or to insult her. Am I the asshole? I don't even think we need to go into it. No, just no. Yes, you're an asshole. Yeah. It's not your body. She's got three children. She's had three children. Shut the fuck up. You should, you should, she, chances are she's probably quite aware of it and you don't need to point it out to her and make her feel bad. Because I there... think there were probably negative intentions there as well, let's be honest. Well, there wasn't positive, was it? Cause... No. Um, oh, do you not realise you're still, you're still carrying the baby weight? The ba- oh, it's not the Moving baby on. weight. The you're baby weight is the baby. If it's out, it's just your body, right? We can't, I, no, me and Laura are angry now. Yes, you're an asshole, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you can go in the bag of dicks. He can't, that's who I'm putting in the bag of dicks today. Okay. That man. Great. Okay, I've got one for you. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I'd lose respect for him if he stopped working, even though I could afford it? When we met, we both had crappy jobs and always agreed it would be 50-50 struggling together. As of the last few years, particularly this last year, my career took off and my paycheck skyrocketed and this will be my first year making six figures. You go, girl. Yes, babes. Uh, it's really cool and I've offered to take on a lot more finances like more of the bills and paying for trips and fun things but recently my husband made a comment that he soon wouldn't have to work at his job our kids are school age there is no need for a full-time parent and I never agreed to that so I very firmly said um, I never dreamt of financially providing for a grown man if you stop working I will lose respect for you <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, it got very silent and I asked if he understood and we were on the same page and he said yes I know my husband's dream is to just do his art and he's always dreamt of a way to make that full time telling him to quit work while I pay for everything feels like leeching at the same time that doesn't sound very supportive at all of me I have feelings it's a difficult one right because like I've always heard more than that Mm. and I've like always grown up in like a household where it's been like the man should provide right Mm. so like I have to kind of battle that internal monologue a lot of the time um (sighs) I'm just going to be really honest. I think she could have said it more tactfully and yeah. had a more of a, an, an, a kind of like nice discussion about it. But like if Matt said to me, I want to give up work and there was like, I don't know, I just feel like, like why? Mm. Like again, if you had young children, he was doing all the yeah. kind of whatever. She shouldn't have said about leeching because that does feel really insensitive and unfair. Yeah. But just being honest, if that was me in that situation, I think I would probably feel like the same. But then is that just like misogyny? Because a lot of women do expect to just be looked after by a man. Yes, but then... Is that right? But but then you've got the children argument and obviously there if, if you've got children at home and you're looking after those children... Then you, as a family, you make that commitment, don't you? Of 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 you're you're giving up work so you can look after your children. So you know, provide whoever's doing that, whatever that way. I don't know. It's really weird because, like, if it was the other way round, ah, uh, do you know That's this is I mean. yeah, this is weird. And I want to be like champion this girl and be like, yes, girl, get get your six figures. No, your man can work for himself. We're not paying for like grown men totally. But also, on the flip side, if she wanted to say something like, I've got a passion of art. And I really want to pursue it. And financially, we're able to survive on one salary for a while. Yeah. Ah, I want to be so girl power, but I'm strugs. It's, it is hard, isn't it? Because also, like you said, it's that I'd actually forgotten about that until you said it. He has got a passion for art and he wants to pursue that. Yeah. It's not like he's saying, oh, I think I just want to like sit on the sofa all Chill day and do while. nothing. Yeah. Um, that would be absolutely get off your ass and no. Yeah. We don't know. What do you think? Everyone? Yeah, tell us. DM us. We want to know. <laughs> we want to know. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. Okay, let's go. Final one. And I'm going to do this one for you, Laura. Am I the arsehole for cancelling my wife's TV subscriptions? I don't know if she's trying to play some sort of Pokemon gotta catch them all. But for TV <laughs> subscription. But my wife has subscribed to over 15 TV services adding to our monthly bills without even letting me know beforehand. I found out while checking my account today. I asked her why she needed all these subscriptions and she said that it's nice to have more variety. I get that. Um, 
I was really upset she decided to go behind my back and purchase all these things. So I cancelled the subscriptions and I told her she can watch free stuff instead. <laughs> my money. She threw a tantrum and called me a jerk. Am I the arsehole? So additional details he has provided because I'm sure a bunch of people have gone on. Yeah. He said, wife does no housework. We have a maid. Wife decided to quit her job despite my wishes two months into marriage. We have no children. Divorce is not feasible in our cultural environment. I love that someone's suggested divorce then because he's answering that. My money is singularly in my account, not joint. Okay. She looked through my work bag for my credit card to get the subscriptions without my knowledge. This is a mess. I don't think she should have done that without asking. Like when you're in a partnership, sorry, okay, yeah, that's really No, it, no, it doesn't. Like but that. you're so right. It's not about asking. It's about running it past the okay, other person, fine. right? So like, I would never ask my things. I've I am my own money, bitch, right? I don't do. like. But if I was going to put something on the joint account, mm. no, I would just buy it. But <laughs> no, if it was like a big thing. Like I would, I would say like, oh, by the way, I've done it. This, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not. I mean, I'm not asking permission. But yeah. if it was his money, then I, yeah, like I wouldn't spend it. I mean, they're married, so it's different. Mm. I think he's a bit power crazy. I think he's a bit power crazy. The, the, mm. the language he uses is very not my favorite. Agreed. But we also don't know the financial situation, right? Stop so, being so reasonable. <laughs> I'm, I've got splinters in my ass from being on the fence. All right, I am Switzerland, <laughs> but they could also be in like financial trouble. Right, yeah, so like okay. if like say like that, you know, a few years ago we were str- not struggling, but you know we were just kind of like paying yeah. the just paying the bills and getting by. If Matt all of a sudden like s- s- run up all these subscriptions and like you're probably well, that's what, at least a hundred quid a month. Yeah, or something. yeah, that's okay. That's true. And uh, to be fair, I mean? we don't need fifteen. I do have like no, five, that is a lot. and a five is a lot. You can punts off my um Disney there's... Plus and everything else, by the way. Oh, fabulous! Yeah, but yeah, but excuse me. Hold on a minute. I am the my all my family and friends are the parasites. I'm the person that pays for it. My mum, my dad, my sister, my friends. They all use my stuff. I'm the one that pays. That's not parasites. Good. The lot of you. You should You're not do that. You should. You should share it out. It should be even. Yeah, no, I know, you but can I totally can't. Punts off my Disney Plus. I don't mind. Love that for me. So <laughs> basically, we're not quite sure. No. It's just nuance, isn't it? It's... Yes. That sounds like a marriage question that I can't answer. Yeah. She should have run it past him, though. But also, this man needs to stop being so Agreed. controlling, I think. See, it's nice to have balance, isn't it? It is. It hurts me. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I have an issue with men, everyone. Sorry about that. <laughs> there are reasons. Uh, cool. I love them. They're fun. They're so much fun. We need to do more of those. They're fun because we feel like we can judge, but then we judge and then we get to the place where we accept... Yeah, and we're nice. If you have any Am I the Arsehole questions of your own... Oh, please send them to us. Send them to us because we'd love to hear them. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for listening. We've been Laura and Lauren on Fire About Asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Literally have loved doing this. It's been nice to do it in person. I think hopefully you'll get the vibes of we're, we're tired, we're a bit cranky today, but I think we've given the excitement and the vibes yeah. today. I hope so. I really enjoyed I hope you still like us. <laughs> please listen If you don't, week. we won't see you next week. If you do, we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> But before we close the show completely, so if you do ever want to get in touch with us, you can email us at golove at crowdnetwork.co.uk and you can find us on Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, why are you not following us on Instagram? Um, at Go Love Yourself Pod or you can find the Facebook group by searching Go Love Yourself Community. We'll be back with a brand new episode next week, of course. And if you want to support the show by subscribing on Patreon or Apple Podcasts, we'll love you forever. You can then get ad-free and early episodes for just £1 a week or you can listen ad-free on Amazon Music. Thank you so much for listening. We hope that we haven't annoyed you too much, uh, mainly Lauren. And we'll, st- <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week. I think I just sounded like a seagull. <laughs> play, that, play that last bit back when you listen. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs>